welcome back to the channel and to another Fall Food Friday collaboration with Fallon over at Moss Family TV. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I do a mix of cooking and sewing videos. And today I'd like to show you some great fall recipes, beef burgundy, French bread, and pumpkin chocolate chip cookies. I'm making our family recipe for pumpkin chocolate chip cookies. I usually double the recipe when I make these cookies and that will make about five and a half dozen pumpkin chocolate chip cookies. This time I plan on baking a few sheets, a few dozen, and then freezing the rest of the dough into balls already made up so I can use them later on in the next coming weeks. In the description box, I'll leave the recipe, but I'll leave it for half of what I'm making, so the original amount. So I'm using one cup of butter, two teaspoons of baking powder, two teaspoons of baking soda, one can of pumpkin, one teaspoon of salt, two teaspoons of ground nutmeg, two teaspoons of ground cinnamon, three cups of sugar, two eggs, chocolate chips, and I ended up using almost two packages of these 11.5 ounce chocolate chips. But my husband likes a lot of chocolate chips in these cookies. And five cups of all-purpose flour. Add the butter, eggs, and sugar, and cream in a mixer or by hand. Add the two cups of pumpkin, the baking powder, baking soda, salt, nutmeg, and cinnamon, and cream again. to add half of the flour and then mix and then when that's done scrape the at the sides of the bowl and then add the rest of the flour and mix again add the chocolate chips then mix again baking sheet with cooking spray and then measure out the cookie dough with a cookie scoop onto the baking sheet. These bake at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 to 12 minutes. I only baked two dozen and the rest I scooped out onto a cookie tray with um, parchment paper on it and put those in the freezer overnight. Next day, I took the frozen cookie dough out of the freezer and put it into Ziploc bags. 
I was able to get two bags with almost two dozen cookie dough balls in each bag. And then those went back into the freezer for another day. It's a day later and I'm getting ready to start the French bread for dinner. I got this recipe out of the newspaper about 45 years ago and I'd never tried it until now. I added one package of active dry yeast, one and a quarter cups of warm water, and one teaspoon of sugar to the mixing bowl and let that sit for a few minutes. Then I added two teaspoons of salt and one tablespoon of vegetable oil and two cups of all-purpose flour and then mixed it. At this point I added more flour than I should have and the mixture became really dry. So you're only going to want to add one and a half cups more flour and then mix it well. I was able to add a little more water and get it into a nice consistency and then I kneaded it on my mixer on the second speed for five minutes. Add some vegetable oil to a bowl and spread it around and then add the bread dough. I make it into a ball and then I Put it in upside down and then flip it over. I covered the bowl loosely with plastic wrap and set it in a warm place to rise. Now I'm starting on the beef burgundy by cutting the mushrooms that I've cleaned into quarters. You can leave them whole if you wish or slice them. It's all up to you. I usually use frozen pearl onions in this recipe, but for some reason I wasn't able to find any this time. I went to four stores looking for them. So instead I used fresh Cipollini or you could use fresh pearl onions and I put them in hot water and I actually microwaved them for a couple of minutes and then I was able to um, cut the ends off and take the peels off very easily. These were really good and sweet but they were kind of big. I would probably use pearl onions next time. In my Dutch oven, I put some olive oil and then I put the mushrooms and let them saute. And then I put the cipollini onions in and let them brown for a little bit. I seasoned both with salt and pepper.
While those were cooking, I cut up a beef roast into stew meat. You could buy stew meat already cut up, but it's just cheaper to do it this way. Once the stew meat is all cut up, I put some flour on a plate and season it with salt and pepper and then dredge the meat into the flour mixture. added more olive oil to the Dutch oven and cooked the stew meat in batches. The next time I do this recipe I will brown the beef in a fry pan because the flour burns on the bottom and I had to wash the pan halfway through the process and it would have just been easier to use a fry pan if I had to wash it halfway through. I added the beef back into the Dutch oven and I left the mushrooms and the onions out and I didn't show it but I returned them back to the pot after the beef had cooked a couple of hours. With the beef all back into the Dutch oven I add three and a half cups of beef stock to the pan. The recipe calls for two cups of beef broth and a cup and a half of red wine. But I don't use wine to cook, so I just added the full amount of liquid as three and a half cups of beef broth. Add two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar, and I added some dry thyme and dried rosemary that I just crushed in the palm of my hand and added to the beef. I also added some powdered garlic. The recipe also called for two bay leaves and I didn't use them, but if you have them, go ahead and put them in. I made a mistake in that before I put the beef back into the pot, I should have put the beef broth in and let it boil and reduce but I didn't do that and so I was boiling it after I had the beef in it to try and um, evaporate some of the liquid. Here I'm taking some of the cookie dough that I had in the freezer and putting it onto a sprayed pan and I'm going to let that sit for about 10 minutes and then I bake the cookies. The bread dough is now ready to punch down and roll into a rectangle on the counter. I didn't quite get it into a, a rectangle, but then um, you roll it up like a cinnamon roll and then put oil on a baking sheet and put it on the baking sheet with the seam side down and let it raise. Actually, before I let it rise again, I did three slashes with a sharp knife over the top of it. And then instead of putting oil on top of the bread, of the bread dough, you take cold water, very cold water, and it said, the recipe says to brush it over the top, and so I just patted it on with my hands. I didn't cover this and let it alone to rise for an hour.
When it had risen, I baked it in a 375 degree oven for 40 minutes. After it came out of the oven, I put some butter over the top of it and it made the crust look more golden. This bread recipe was fantastic and my husband thought that it had come from a bakery. I would highly recommend this recipe to anyone. After about four hours, the beef was ready to add cornstarch to it, so I took one tablespoon of cornstarch and put some water in it and mixed it up thoroughly and then added it to the pot of beef burgundy. I made some mashed potatoes to um, put the beef burgundy over. And can I tell you, my house just smelled amazing with this um, yummy beef stew mixture and with the bread baking. It was really an exceptional meal. So here you have beef burgundy over mashed potatoes, French bread, and pumpkin chocolate chip cookies. I hope you try these recipes. And I hope you'll go on over to Moss Family TV and check out Fall Food Friday and the playlist with all the many fall recipes that are on that playlist. I'll leave the recipes to these three dishes in the description box. And please like and subscribe to my channel if you like what you see. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.